A little while ago, I vowed never to buy another GoPro camera. So what on earth am I doing with their latest camera, the GoPro Hero 12? Here's the thing. GoPros are actually fantastic cameras. They've got some amazing image quality and some really good image stabilization. But for me, they're just a little too unreliable. I can be filming something and the camera might freeze or it might do some weird video artifact thing or it might not record sound or it might just stop recording halfway through. I just couldn't count on it. So instead, I started using the DJI Osmo Action 4. And so far, that camera has worked perfectly, does everything that I need a camera to do. And I'll be honest here and say that I didn't actually buy this GoPro Hero 12. DJI sent it to me and they've asked me to compare it to their Osmo Action 4. So let's see how it does. So first impressions are that yes, they are indeed action cameras. Uh, they look kind of more or less the same as each other. The GoPro Hero 12 is slightly bigger than the Action 4, and I understand there's a six uh, gram weight difference, so nothing desperate. They're both gonna do, again, more or less the same sort of thing. So shoot videos, uh, shoot uh, slow-mo, take photos, do hyperlapses, etc. Both cameras will shoot in 4K. The, the maximum resolution on the Action 4 is 4K, but the Hero 12 will shoot up to 5.3K, but the, the file sizes for that are just gonna be absolutely huge. So I personally won't be doing that. And now for the all important sensor size, the Action 4 has a one over 1 1.3 inch sensor, whereas the Hero 12 has a one over 1 1.9 inch sensor. Now I don't pretend to know what those numbers mean, but I understand that that means the Action 4 has a slightly bigger sensor than the Hero 12, and that apparently is going to give you better image quality, better low light performance, and better things like shallow depth of field, for instance. In my opinion, the most important aspect of any camera is the image quality. And this is the image coming straight out of both of these cameras. I've set it to the widest possible field of view, which means there's no image stabilization. So the camera's on a tripod. The white balance is 5,500 Kelvin, and it's on auto shutter and auto gain. I'm also using the standard color profile. As you can see, I've come indoors now, and I've changed the white balance to auto. And my living room here is being lit by a mixture of daylight coming in from outside and the tungsten lights in the house here. Hopefully this will give you an idea of how well or how bad the auto works, plus it will give you another opportunity to see just how wide the shots are from each of the cameras. So yeah, as you can see, it's, uh, it's raining quite hard here, so um, not the best of weather, but I thought I would also give you an opportunity to see what a typical kind of selfie shot would look like, and this is the sort of thing that you would do uh, if you were doing a vlog or something like that. Again, uh, image is straight out the camera, no color correction, it's the standard color profile, no editing, um, daylight white balance, and it's on the widest possible field of view. So again, no stabilization. Both cameras support one touch recording, which means you don't have to turn the camera on and then press record. You just hit the top button, the camera starts recording, you hit the button again, and the camera stops recording. If you want to change the settings on the cameras, the, uh, the menu systems are both pretty straightforward and intuitive, and the large screen on the back of both of the cameras just makes it very easy to do that. I, I would say that the Action 4's system is slightly more intuitive, but if you've been using a GoPro for a while, you shouldn't really have any problems with the Hero 12. One of the most really important features for me on any action camera is image stabilization. And here is the image stabilization working on these two cameras now. Now, because image stabilization is digital, these cameras, and indeed any action camera, has to crop into the image slightly. So the image isn't quite as wide. You don't get that wide field of view, but I think that's a small sacrifice to pay to have such good 
image stabilization. Normally, I do these pieces to camera on my bike, and that, to be fair, is pretty smooth anyway. So I thought I'd come out and do a walk because that's a real test of image stabilization. If, like me, you hate wonky horizons, then another really useful feature on both of these cameras is horizon leveling, although here on the Action 4, it's called horizon balancing. And as you can see, I'm starting to tilt the camera and the horizon is still very level. However, if I go beyond about 45 degrees, that's where the Action 4 loses it. Go back again, go back this way, and it's gone again. So let's just level it up and go back to level again. And here is what the GoPro calls horizon leveling. And again, you have to go down to the linear field of view and the horizons will stay perfectly level. But unlike on the Action 4, you can go pretty much, well, yeah, 360 degrees and there is no loss of horizon leveling. So that is pretty good. As you would expect, both cameras are waterproof to a depth of about three meters. They both have voice control, so you can start and stop recording just by talking to it. And the Hero 12 has a very clever little scheduled capture feature, which allows you to set a timer to start it recording and to stop it recording, which is absolutely fantastic if you don't fancy getting up at the crack of dawn to film a time lapse of a sunrise, for instance. I've set both of these cameras back to the super wide view and I've also set them to record in the 10-bit log color profile that both of them have. Now the advantage of shooting in this color profile is that it is fairly flat, which gives you a very good dynamic range and it allows you to grade the image in post so that you can get the look that you want. So okay, both of these cameras are still on their maximum field of view, but I've set the color profile back to standard color. And the Hero 12 is also recording in its maximum resolution of 5.3K, whereas the Action 4 is recording in its maximum resolution of 4K. And is there any difference in the image quality? You tell me. Both cameras have dual screens. The one on the back on the Hero 12 is a touch screen and that's where you can change all of the settings. But the front screen is merely just a viewing screen. You can only see the status of the camera and you can only view what you're shooting. You can't use it to change any of the settings. And that's the difference with the Action 4. That is completely touch screen and it doesn't matter which way the camera is facing. If you want to change the settings, you can just reach out and use the front screen to do that. One of the great things with the Action 4 is the magnetic mounting system. Now this just clips onto the bottom of the camera and it makes it very quick and very easy to swap the cameras between different mounts. Compare that to the Hero 12 and that uses the same old finger mounts that uh, many reiterations of the GoPros have used in the past. Now, while that's fairly secure and reliable, it does make it a little bit time consuming to unscrew it from the mount, screw it back into another mount. Now, one workaround that I found is using the PGY Tech cap lock range of camera mounts. Now, this uses an ingenious system of a universal mount that you can put on the GoPro, you can put on the Action 4, and then it's very quickly and easily released and mounted in, well, all of the other cap lock range of camera mounts. It's very, very clever. Battery life on both cameras is more or less the same. You're going to get between 90 minutes and two hours of runtime, but if you need to recharge, the Action 4 will recharge up to about 80% in only 15 minutes. Compare that to the Hero 12 and you'll be there a couple of hours charging it. You've probably worked it out already, but the little speaker symbol below each of the shots indicates which camera you're listening to. But for the sake of clarity, here we go with the sound coming from the Action 4, one, two, three, four, and the sound coming from the GoPro, one, two, three, four. Now you can plug external mics into both of these cameras, uh, with the Action 4, you can just plug a mic directly into the USB socket, 
but with the GoPro you do have to buy the media mod which is fairly expensive and while I'm out here it's also a good opportunity to get an idea of what the low light capability is like it's about four o'clock on a December afternoon so it's fairly dark and hopefully both of these cameras are giving you a good image so the burning question is which is the better camera and I suppose that really boils down to you and what sort of filming you're going to be doing. For me personally, I really like both cameras. I make no secret of it, I really like GoPros, but for me, the issue has always been the reliability. I'll be fair here and say that I've only been using this Hero 12 for about a week and so far it's worked perfectly, but I've been using the Action 4 for about six months and that also has been working perfectly. Image wise, stabilization wise, horizon balancing, audio, there's not a lot in it, but for the moment, I think I'm going to stick with the Action 4 purely on the reliability side of things. Throughout this video, I've been using split screens to demonstrate the difference between the cameras, but I appreciate that this isn't the most accurate way of doing things. So what I'm going to do is post two extra videos and they will have the raw footage from each of the cameras full screen. So you can get a better idea of what the images actually look like. If you'd like to go and watch these videos, then I'll include a link to both of them in the description below.